Religion Within the Limits of Reason Alone, pages 15 to 17. What we mean by an evil man. Some hold that the world has fallen from primordial happiness into its present evil state. Others, more modern, hold that the world is improving, going from bad to better, and that the predisposition to such progress is implicit in human nature. But this latter view is surely not deduced from experience. But since it may well be that both sides have erred in their reading of experience, the question arises whether a middle ground may not at least be possible, namely, that man as a species is neither good nor bad, or at all events that he is as much the one as the other, partly good, partly bad. We call a man evil, however, not because he performs actions that are evil or contrary to law, but because those actions are of such a nature that we may infer from them the presence in him of evil maxims. In and through experience, we can observe actions contrary to law, and we can observe, at least in ourselves, that they are performed in the consciousness that they are unlawful. But a man's maxims, sometimes even his own, are not thus observable. Consequently, the judgment that the agent is an evil man cannot be made with certainty if grounded on experience. In order then to call a man evil, it would have to be possible a priori to infer from several evil acts done with consciousness of their evil, or from one such act, an underlying evil maxim, and further from this maxim to infer the presence in the agent of an underlying common ground, itself a maxim, of all particular morally evil maxims. Interpretation this passage comes from the beginning of Book One of the Religion, titled Concerning the Indwelling of the Evil Principle with the Good, or On the Radical Evil in Human Nature. Over the next twenty pages, Kant will give an account of the nature and origin of human evil. In this passage, he shifts our attention from the empirical evidence of evil actions to the maxims or rules of conduct behind those actions and then ultimately to a maxim of maxims that might be the ultimate ground of evil in an individual. Let's take an example. How do we conclude Hitler is an evil man? What sort of evidence would back up this conclusion? Begin by considering empirical evidence. We could empirically observe the specific actions Hitler performs. Many of these are harmful actions that we may call evil, but observation alone will not reveal to us Hitler's state of mind, the maxim or rule of conduct behind each of his harmful actions. No matter how closely we observe, we do not find evil in the empirical reality of Hitler's actions, because it lies concealed in his will, which is not observable to us. So we need some evidence deeper than observation to ground the conclusion Hitler is evil. Kant tells us we must be able to employ some a priori principle which, applied to Hitler's observed harmful actions, will reveal to us the presence in Hitler's mind of a morally evil maxim. This maxim, for those of you who know Kantian ethics, is the true source of the moral worth, or its opposite, in Hitler's actions. It is this maxim that we condemn when we call Hitler's actions evil actions. To get from Hitler's actions are evil, to Hitler is an evil man, we must see still deeper into Hitler's moral psychology, and conclude the presence of a maxim of maxims, a governing evil supermaxim, so to speak, that directs Hitler's choice of his evil maxims, and thus his doing of evil deeds. This is of a piece with Kant's moral system. Although we observe and praise or condemn actions, we always do so on the basis of our insight into the maxim, the rule of conduct in the mind of the one acting. And to call a man himself evil seems to involve still further insight into his character, his governing maxim, 